Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by, and welcome to Amberella's fourth quarter fiscal year 2021 earnings conference call. At this time, all participant lines are in a listen-only mode. After the speaker's presentation, there will be a question and answer session. To ask a question during the session, you will need to press star than one on your telephone. Please be advised that today's conference is being recorded. If you require any further assistance, please press star than zero. I would now like to hand the conference over to your host today, Louis Gearhardy, Corporate Development. Please go ahead. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our fourth quarter and our fiscal year 2021 financial results conference call. On the call today is Dr. Fermi Wong, President and CEO, and Casey Eichler, CFO. Uh, we're dialing in today from different lo quick locations. Uh, consequently, I'll be covering Casey's prepared remarks, and then Casey will be online for Q&A. The primary purpose of today's call is to provide you with information regarding our fourth quarter and our fiscal 2021 results. The discussion today and the responses to your question will contain forward-looking statements regarding our projected financial results, financial prospects, market growth, and demand for our solutions, among other things. These statements are subject to risks, uncertainties, and assumptions. Should any of these risks or uncertainties materialize, or should our assumptions prove to be incorrect, our actual results could differ materially from these forward-looking statements. We're under no obligation to update these statements. These risks, uncertainties, and assumptions, as well as other information on potential risk factors that could affect our financial results are more fully described in the documents we file with the SEC, including the annual report on Form 10-K that we filed on March 27, 2020 for fiscal year 20, ending January 31, 2020, and the Form 10-Q filed on December 9, 2020 for the third quarter of fiscal year 21. Access to our fourth quarter and fiscal 21 results press release, historical results, SEC filings, and a replay, as well as the prepared transcripts of today's call can be found on the investor relations portion of our website. Uh, with that, uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Fermi Wong. Thank you, Louis, and good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Our multi-year visual AI investment is the major factor in the accelerated business momentum we are reporting. Fiscal year 21 revenue of $223 million was down 3% from the prior year, with the CV growing significantly, exceeding 10% of total revenue for the year, with the video processor business down around 10%. Fiscal year 21 came with many challenges, the pandemic, geopolitics, and an increasingly tight supply chain. And these factors remain to varying degrees today. I'm pleased with how we have managed this environment. And as, as I look into fiscal year 22, my goal is to maintain a high level of execution and leverage our leadership position with our differentiated and proprietary digital AI silicon. Q4 finished the year on a strong note with revenue 4% above the high end of our guidance range, driven by CV, with the number of production CV projects doubling sequentially. Embraer's highly focused video and image processing R&D investment crossed over a cumulative $1 billion in Q4, with almost half of this amount directed to our proprietary AI technology development. In fiscal year 21, Validation of this investment was strong, as more than 175 unique CV customers purchased engineering parts and or development systems, including more than 40 reaching production volumes in, in a year. By the end of the current quarter, we expect to have shipped more than 2 million CV SOCs on a cumulatively basis with more than 300,000 CV SOCs shipped into the automotive market. I am extremely proud of our new product execution, as demonstrated by the introduction of our flagship CV5, the first in a family of five nanometer AI vision processors. As we look into fiscal year 22, our guidance contemplates supply chain 
are su supply side challenges, growth in the organization, an expanding product portfolio, and the development of a number of increasingly diverse markets. We remain confident the visual AI market is still in its early stages, and we continue to expect CV to be at least 25% of total revenue for the year with a video processor business posting moderate growth. I will now update, uh, I will now provide an update on our customers and markets. <coughs> At the beginning of the year, we introduced our CV5, an artificial intelligence AI vision processor cap capable of recording 8K video or full 4K video streams. The new SOC will enable the development of intelligent automotive camera systems, consumer cameras, and the robotic cameras. It combines Embraer's powerful CV flow AI engines with dual ARM A76 CPUs to provide the performance necessary for a wide range of AI based algorithms. Fabricated in the most advanced fine nanometer process technology, we believe CV5, CV5 sets a new industry benchmark for power consumption, consuming approximately 2 watts of power while encoding 8K video at 30 frames per second or 5 watts at 60 frames per second. In January, Umbrella held its annual customer technology event during what would have been the live consumer electronic show. Our virtual event was held over a two-week period and included the individual live hosting of, of over 200 worldwide customers, spanning automotive, consumer, robotic, and IoT markets. Featuring over 30 technology demonstrations with an emphasis on advanced AI applications, the event was a great success, allowing us to keep engaged not just with existing customers, but to meet many new ones that might not otherwise have been able to travel to Las Vegas for a live show. During the quarter, at the Amazon reInvent show, AWS announced their new Panorama SDK with support for Umbrella CV Flow SOCs. The Panorama SDK allows device, device manufacturers to easily build edge computer vision devices for a wide array of use cases across industrial IoT and other segments. Umbrella was chosen as one of the only two initial semiconductor partners to build an ecosystem of hardware accelerated HAI devices with our solution targeting intelligent camera designs. I would now like to uh, take the opportunity to describe some of our customer related highlights from the quarter, starting with the automotive market. Today, we announced the motion of a global leader in driverless technology, has selected Umbrella CV Flow family of AI processors. The processor works with Motional's network of LiDAR, camera, and radar sensors to enable the vehicle's safe, oper safe operation in diverse and challenging road conditions. Motional is leading the industry in making driverless vehicle a reality. The company recently became among the first in the world to put driverless vehicle on public roads and announce a landmark agreement with Lyft for the largest deployment of robot taxi on a major ride-share network. The company driving record including navigating more than 1.5 million miles in diverse environments and providing more than 100,000 public rides with zero at fault incidents. It has also led the establishment of industry leading safety standards, having co-published the safety first for automated white paper. Embrace C Flow SOC will be part of the central processing module emotional driverless vehicle, providing image and computer vision processing for cameras in the sensing suite, including the front-facing cameras. The CV4 AI engine will enable motional AI algorithms to perform comple complex computer vision tasks, such as object detection, classification, and image segmentation with industry-leading power efficiency. Embraer's advanced image processing will allow the vehicles 
to operate in challenging lighting conditions, including low light and high contrast situations, while the SOC's H.264 encoding will enable logging of video data from all cameras in the vehicle. In the Chinese automated market, the world's largest, we have won a number of driver monitoring and the combination with driver monitor, monitoring plus in-cabin monitoring designs in passenger vehicles. These designs are with leading automotive OEMs and are expected to enter into mass production this year. The designs leverage umbrella CV flow AI processing to enable driver safety functions, such as detecting distracted or drowsy drivers, as well as our HOC ability to process RGB IR images. The designs are based on our CV25 SOCs, as well as our new CV28 SOC, which we announced in the fourth quarter of last year. Also during the quarter, Ford introduced a dealer fit dash camera for its European model based on Umbrella's A12AX automotive SOC. Designed by Falcon Electronics, the small phone factor wide angle HD cameras fits into the rear view mirror zone of the white windscreen without obstructing the driver's view and integrates with Ford's Sync 3 screen and the voice control. And in China, Joint Venture FAW Volkswagen introduced its new CC passenger car with a dealer fit HD DVR based on Umbrella's A12A SOC. Also during the quarter, a major home monitoring camera maker entered into mass production of a new class of intelligent camera, ba camera based on our CV, CV flow SOCs. Umbrella is beginning to see significant CV, CV growth in home security cameras. Customers' requirement for cameras with higher quality alerts realized with advanced hardware designs and more sophisticated algorithm for object detection, motion detection, and packaging protection are driving the adoption of umbrella CV flow SOCs. In January, Along.com released its touchless video doorbell, eliminating the need to physically press the doorbell button. The doorbell recognizes when a person stands on your door doormat and sends a mobile alert, allowing you to see and to talk to your visitor from what, where, wherever you are. Based on Embraer's H5L, it includes 150 degree vertical view of vertical field of view to allow viewing of a package, packages, full HD resolution, IR night vision, and HDR processing. Also during the quarter, Logitech launched its circle view wired doorbell. The first consumer doorbell includes home, uh, Apple HomeKit secure video. The doorbell leverages users' existing iCloud storage for video recording without paying a separate subscription, and provides a similar viewing experience with the home app on iPhones, Apple Watch, or other Apple devices. The doorbell is based on Umbrella's H5LM SOC. In the professional IP security camera market, Umbrella has continued to benefit from customers migrating from high silicon to our solution and from widespread adoption of SOCs based on our CV flow AI architecture. During the quarter, Dahua, the world's second largest security camera maker, continued its migration to Umbrella with multiple product launches. For intelligent transport systems product, our CV2 SOC is being used for three, five, and nine megapixel ITS cameras. In IP security cameras, our CV22 and the CV2 SOCs are now shipping for four and eight megapixel designs with advanced ana ana analytics. And also Korean market leader Hanhua Taekwin further extended its portfolio of umbrella-based IP security cameras, including a new three-channel multi-directional camera based on our CV22 CV flow SOC, a new four-channel panoramic camera based on our flagship 
CV flow CV2 SOC, and the new 5 megapixel cooling mount model based on our H3L63 SOC. Also during the quarter, IDIS, Korea's second largest camera supplier, introduced three new camera families based on our CV flow CV22, H5L, and the H3L SOCs. The, the new cameras include fisheye, 5 megapixel and 8 megapixel models and leverage intelligent codec capability to reduce network bandwidth and storage requirements. And in Europe, German IP camera specialist Delmeyer introduced its new Panamera S camera based on CV22 by combining several lenses and the sensors with different focal lengths the Panamera S is able to capture remote and the middle areas with the same high resolution of the scenes in the foreground. We are continuing to see opportunities in new class of sensing cameras spanning multiple vertical applications, such as access control, occupancy monitoring, and retail analytics. During the quarter, Genius Pro, a leading provider of 3D time of flight sensor systems, introduced a, a people counting camera targeting transport and the building monitoring applications. Based on our CV25 CV flow SOC, it includes both a visible CMOS sensor and a TOF sensor, with CV25 performing sensor fusion and the AI processing to provide high accuracy people counting. In summary, we are leveraging our successful video processor heritage into the development of a highly optimized video AI family of SOCs. In essence, our addressable market expanding beyond human viewing applications to include the install base of machines that can now use our CV SOCs to visually perceive their environment and make decisions, leading to higher level of autonomy and eventually automation. The adoption of our expanding family of visual AI is silicon into increasingly diverse markets, including pure machine sensing, was demonstrated by the motion, motional announcement today. It's in the early stage, but is taking shape. And as this adoption drives revenue growth, we expect to continue to deliver positive, positive earning leverage to shareholders. In our earning calls on June 4th, 2019, we provided guidance on the anticipated shape of the first three waves of CV revenue. We stated wave one, professional security, will become material in calendar year 20. Wave two, home security, will become, immature, will become material in calendar year 21. And wave three, automotive, will become material in the calendar year 22-23 timeframe. We achieved our wave one goal in the last year, and I am confident we are on track to achieve wave two and three in their prospective timeframes. The last CV wave automotive is firmly on track as we have indicated with our communication last quarter on our automotive self revenue funnel and in fiscal year 22, driven by CV, we anticipate our auto business will grow at a rate that is significantly higher than the other business. This is important as our automotive. Automotive SEM is estimated to be about two thirds of total SEM in fiscal year 22, or more than $3 billion, going to almost $7 billion in fiscal year 26. The mega trends for security, safety, and automation are very favorable. And to address this secular growth forces, we continue to build our team globally to support the rising interest in our CV SOC from existing and new markets. I would like to thank all of our employees for their contribution to our leadership position in the market and for their execution in this turbulent environment. And thanks to all our other stakeholders for your continual support. I will now turn the call over to Louis, who will give you more details 
about what we are seeing and expect for the business. Thank you. Thank you, Fermi. I will review the financial highlights for the fourth quarter uh, and the full fiscal year 21 ending on January 31st, 2021 and provide an outlook for our first quarter of fiscal year 22 uh, that ends on April 30th, 2021. We will be discussing non-GAAP results and ask that you refer to today's press release for a detailed reconciliation of GAAP to non-GAAP results. For non-GAAP reporting, we've eliminated stock-based compensation expense adjusted for the impact of taxes. Despite the pandemic, geopolitical and supply chain challenges, revenue in fiscal 21 decreased 3% to $223 million as strong CV product ramp offset much of the headwinds. For the year, security camera revenue represented about 60% of revenue with a balance roughly split between auto and other. For fiscal year 21, non-GAAP gross margin was 61.4%, up from 58.5% in fiscal year 20, driven primarily by the richer product mix as two of our professional security camera customers in China had an anticipated reduction in their safety stock. Non-GAAP operating expenses increased 10%, primarily due to a $10 million increase in R&D. Our cash flow from operations was $30.8 million for the year, and with no debt, net cash and marketable securities totaled $440 million. Driven by CV products, Q4 revenue of 62.1 was 4% above the high end of our guidance range of 56 to 60 million. These results represent an increase of 11% from Q3 and an increase of 9% when compared to the same quarter a year ago. Auto revenue increased more than 20% sequentially and year over year. Security camera sequential growth was about 20% and began to grow again on a year-over-year -year basis after the anticipated trough in Q3. Other revenue experienced a seasonal decline. Non-GAAP gross margin for Q4 was 61.4%, slightly above the high end of our guidance range of 59 to 61%. As anticipated, gross margin declined 129 basis points from the prior quarter to the product and customer mix in the quarter. Non-GAAP operating expense for the fourth quarter was $33.4 million compared to $32.4 million in Q3. This was slightly above the high end of our guidance range of 31 to 33. Other income was about 600000 primarily representing interest income on our cash and marketable securities. Non-GAAP net income for Q4 was $5.1 million or $0.14 cents per share compared to $3.3 million, or $0.09 cents per share in the third quarter. The non-GAAP effective tax rate in Q4 was 4% as the distribution of profits shifted towards lower rate jurisdictions. In the fourth quarter, non-GAAP earnings per share were based on 37.6 million shares. Total headcount at the end of the fourth quarter was 785, with about 81% of employees dedicated to engineering, most of whom are focused on software. Approximately 69% of our headcount is located in Asia. In Q4, we generated positive operating cash flow of 12.5 million. Total accounts receivable at the end of Q4 were 25 million, or 37 days of sales outstanding. This compares to accounts receivable of 24.1 million or 39 days outstanding at the end of the prior quarter. Net inventory at the end of the fourth quarter was 26.1 million compared to 23.7 million at the end of the previous quarter. Days of inventory decreased to 93 days in Q4 from 102 days in Q3. We had two 10% plus customers in Q4 WT Micro, a fulfillment partner in Taiwan who ships to multiple customers in Asia, came in at 68.4% of revenue, and Chikoni, a Taiwanese ODM who manufactures for multiple customers, primarily U.S.-based, came in at 13.8%. 
I will now discuss the outlook for the first quarter of fiscal year 22. We continue to have strong design activity in all of our markets. As you've heard, the semiconductor industry supply chain has become increasingly tight, and it's now very difficult to support customers who place orders inside of our lead times, which have been increasing. In addition, the Texas freeze impacted one of our vendors' operations, and while they are in the process of recovering, we do not yet know the final impact. To the best of our ability at the current time, our guidance contemplates these supply-side dynamics. Despite these challenges, with multiple CV programs ramping production, we expect to perform better than the typical downward seasonal trend in Q1, with revenue anticipated in the 67 to 70 million range, or up 8 to 13 percent sequentially. Auto revenue is anticipated to increase more than 20 percent sequentially, with security up in the low to mid-teens sequentially, and other down about 20 percent sequentially. We continue to monitor the outstanding geopolitical challenges, including the risk of dual supply chain and what that means for our ability to continue to supply our customers in China. In our prior earnings calls, we estimated two professional security camera customers in China had pulled in roughly 10 million of video processor revenue from fiscal year 21 into fiscal year 20. We believe this video processor inventory correction is largely complete, with these two customers combined representing a low teens percent of our total revenue in Q4. As discussed in our November 23rd earnings call, and as Fermi described today, Dawa commenced mass production of multiple products in Q4 with several of our CV SOCs utilized. We estimate Q1 non-GAAP gross margin to be between 59.5 and 61.5, compared to 61.4% in the fourth quarter. Our guidance considers some higher costs and expenses that we're incurring to expedite orders and secure more capacity. We expect non-GAAP OPEX in the first quarter to be between 34 and 36 million, with the increase from Q4 primarily coming from an increased engineering headcount, payroll tax accruals, and other engineering expenses. The Q1 non-GAAP tax rate should be modeled at 10% versus 4% in Q4. We estimated our diluted share count for Q1 be approximately 37.8 million shares. Amberella will be participating in the Morgan Stanley TMT conference tomorrow, March 3rd, Berenberg's American Innovation Seminar on March 4th, Baird's Vehicle Technology and Mobility Conference on March 10th, and the Roth Conference on March 15th, and Bank of America's Auto Summit on March 30th. Please contact us for more details. Thank you for joining our call today. Uh, and with that, I'll turn the call over to Sarah for Q&A polling with uh, Fermi and Casey available. Thank you. As a reminder, to ask a question, you would need to press star then one on your telephone. To withdraw your question, please press the pound key. Our first question comes from the line of Matt Ramsey with Cowan. Your line is now open. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, guys. Um, I thought it was interesting, uh, a couple of points on, on your prepared script for me that you had talked about, um, number one, the very large number of engagements. I think you mentioned, what, 175 now of uh, folks that have taken engineering samples for, for CD-based products. And, and then you also sort of talked about this movement from from sort of phase one of CV adoption into what you guys talked about of, of wave two that might extend into home security. So and maybe you could help us break down the number of the engagements, I think that 175 number by, by whether we're in wave one or two or three and, and what the customer concentration and mix looks like of those engagements. That would be really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Um, in terms of the customer engagement, I would say that uh, um, 
uh, it's a little uh, from uh, from the security camera, both for professional consumer, um, the total number of those customers probably a little more than the automotive, but it's quite balanced. And so that in fact, the, you can see that uh, we we talk about 40 customer in production. I would say majority of that is in professional security camera, and we are seeing some of the consumer security camera going to production. I also mentioned there are a few uh, automotive camera customers uh, in production and driving our CV revenues. So I think that's probably, from the design wing point of view, I would say you can use a, probably half a professional, half auto, and the, but from the in production point of view, I think majority is a professional security camera at this point. Got it. Thank you for that. Um, I guess in, in Casey's script, as delivered by Lewis, um, you guys talked about um, the guidance for um, the, the current quarter being above what would typically be down seasonally, and, and, and we're kind enough to give the split of, of what's driving the quarter's revenue. Um, Casey, if you have any thoughts about um, seasonality for the remainder of the year, uh, would you class? As you see it now, is it typical? Is it affected by supply constraints? Um, I, I'm just trying to understand off of what was a guide that was considerably higher than I think a lot of us had modeled. How should we think about seasonality and your visibility through through the remainder of this of this fiscal year just kicking off? Thank you. Yeah, you know, over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of dynamics that haven't been typical as as in the past. Um, you know, we had uh, wave one is now kind of in full force. Uh, and, and wave two is, is coming in at the end of last year and coming into this year, and that I think will drive um, the, the change in, in uh, dynamic that we talked a little bit about around uh, our business in, in China is also an impact. But on the other side of that, we're, we're trying to look at uh, the first half and the second half of the year and see what the dynamics are there. So um, we're going to try to continue to keep you guys updated as, as we move forward. Um, I don't know that we're going to have the same type of seasonality. We had a little stronger year, quite frankly, in the consumer side last year than we were expecting. Uh, we wouldn't expect to see that this year, uh, but, but we'll have to we'll have to see. As you know, we've said over the next, you know, five years or so, that's going to be declining or continue to decline, but it happened to, to perform a little better than we thought last year. So um, I don't know that I would think about the traditional uh, cycle uh, going forward this year, but I think I would look at the dynamics that not only we're reporting, but others are reporting and, and try to factor that in. Um, we also now have, as, as Fermi talked about, a pretty broad um, a pipeline of activity and automotive that's starting to emerge, and that's that's new to us as well. So um, we're we're pretty uh, pretty excited about all of those dynamics, but I don't know that I would call it typical to our to our historical uh, uh, balance, if you will, over the quarters. Thank you very much, guys. I'll get back. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Tor Randberg with Stiefel. Your line is now open. Yes, thank you, and um, congratulations on the strong results. Uh, question for Fermi. On the, uh, the motional uh, design win, could you elaborate a little bit on that? Uh, are you the exclusive uh, for front-facing camera here? And, and, you know, should we assume that this is a multi-year design win, meaning you're sort of locked in for several years? Um, first of all, I think that uh, our, uh, our chip is responsible for all of the video function perceptions and the, which including the video processing as well as uh, neural network functions and uh, also serve both for the um, front camera as well as all the other cameras surrounding the car. So I, I do, and in fact we have a, uh, with this current design we have to use multiple chip car. Um, and in terms of the, the length of the design cycle, I think uh, the, for the whole lifetime of the shipment, I we believe it's multiple year, and because I think that uh, for any vehicle, you should expect I would say anywhere between four to six of shipment. I, we haven't heard from the motion or give the guidance how long this this uh, um, this uh, uh, product will last, but I have to I, I believe that any vehicle should have that kind of period of uh, service time. Very good. Uh, congrats on that win. And, and a follow up uh, for uh, Casey. Um, Lewis talked uh, about some pressure on gross margin because of higher input costs. 
is is this sort of it for now, uh, or you know, could there be some further pressure as we move throughout the year on uh, on, on on the cogs? Yeah, we're going to have to look at, at uh, what happens as well as you know for supply and, and what we've talked about or what Fermi talked about in, in the call. Um, I, I do think that as we uh, do more and more development in five nanometer, uh, that that does uh, increase the development costs and increase the CAD tool costs and some of the other costs around being on the cutting edge. And so um, uh, I think right now I'd stay uh, generally uh, in the range of where we are today, but we're going to continue to make sure that we have the right products at the right time. And that, that means we have to accelerate, as we talked about, not only hiring, but our development in some of these markets. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Andrew Buscaglia with Berenberg. Your line is now open. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my question. I uh, wanted to, you know, you know this emotional um, announcement this morning is interesting. It kind of dovetails with what Amazon announced with their Zooks platform and RoboTaxis. Uh, I was hoping you could talk a little bit more about that specific market and what you think, you know, this is kind of starting to become a trend and, and you know, with automotive, you know, I guess, how, where do you see growth coming from into, or what's the, what's the growth trajectory like for robotaxis both, I guess, over the next couple of years? I know maybe it's not something we'll count on this year, but can you talk more about that? It seems like you guys are becoming kind of a, you know, becoming a, a bit of a pattern. Yeah, so um, our feeling is that uh, I think the uh, the level five uh, is level four, level four car, consumer cars continue to be, uh, you know, challenging on the technology side as well as uh, on the regulation side. But we do see that uh, uh, people continue to develop technology toward that direction, and we believe with this emotional announcement, uh, the release, the first step that a truck, not a commercial vehicle, or co is commercial vehicle, Going to that direction, I think that's definitely probably a uh, easier uh, way to get get this technology into production. And I I do believe that this is going to become a, a, a important sector. And I think that eventually that's a, a, a the most important market for us in the longer term. Uh, so we continue to uh, invest heavily into this market and continue to invest heavily into our technology to enable our customer to do this kind of development. And I think this is critically important, particularly um, on, the, on the perception portion that for visual perception, I think that uh, doesn't matter whether it's CV, uh, level two plus, level three or level five, I think the visual perceptions continue to become more and more important and people continue demanding higher performance for all, the, for all of those applications. So that's definitely uh, uh, is, uh, good news for Umbrella. But also importantly, uh, we believe that uh, um, although the ADAS market level two plus, level two and level two plus is a near term opportunity for us, but we believe that uh, uh, down, later down the road, uh, this uh, type of level four, level five cars will become uh, the, probably the mainstream of business uh, when the technology and the regulation uh, uh, are set for this market. Interesting. And, um, you know, the commentary on DAWA getting some, some projects, um, was that surprising to you in Q4? And, and what does that mean, I guess, going forward for DAWA and, um, you know, your other big uh, player in security, HickVision? You know, do you see something changing here where these guys are coming back in a more meaningful way to you? Well, I, I think I won't say it's a surprise to us, but for in Q4, but it's definitely – it's a change from the trend we have been seeing for the last two years, right? We talk about that uh, um, this dual supply chain, uh, China and non-China dual supply chain happening, and we do see that uh, uh, the trend continues. But however, the, uh, the uh, Huawei or high silicon situation help us to uh, change that dynamic a little bit. And I do believe on this high-end CV uh, uh, market, um, we are – when people, uh, when, when the high silicon is not there, in, even in China, we have a very good position to uh, provide solution to our customers. And that's, Dahua is a great example. So um, and while I continue to worry about the dual supply chain development uh, in, uh, in China, 
Um, but I do see that uh, uh, because our differentiated technology, uh, we got a chance to uh, get into uh, our Chinese customer, including Dahua and several others, by using our CV chip uh, for their um, AI, AI cameras. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Kevin Cassidy with Rosenblatt Securities. Your line is now open. Thank you, and congratulations on the great quarter. Um, you had uh, changed your outlook for, on the human vision or the video uh, product growth for this year from flat to uh, growing. Uh, can you say what's, what's changed there? Is it that these products have a longer tail than expected, or, or demand is up, or are you just getting more designs? Well, I, I think there's multiple phases, but one of the things is that we, talk, we did talk about that the high vision Dawa gradually uh, digest their inventory level and came back to order more video solutions. That um, really is uh, it's a, a positive surprise to us. And uh, um, also that uh, um, in, in this year, we do see there's a lot of uh, a customer that, for example, we take over some of the, uh, the market share from our competitors that we talk about, also help that direction. And uh, I think these two things definitely is uh, the uh, major reason that we uh, change our guidance a little bit. Okay, great. And um, you know, also you mentioned on the virtual CES, you said 200 customers. Can, can you tell us what, what would be the normal number of customers you'd have at, in uh, Las Vegas at, the, at your booth? Well, last year we are around 170. This year is around 200 plus. So that's probably in that range. Okay, so constant uh, increase in interest and your pipeline is filling up. Yes. For new designs. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Joe Moore with Morgan Stanley. Your line is now open. Great, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Fermi, you talked about the wins in China driver monitoring, um, and maybe if you could just, seems like in a European market that there's a much quicker path to revenue on driver monitoring than there is on ADAS. Is, is that also true in China? Like is that, could that revenue materialize kind of sooner than you might see in some of these other opportunities? Well, uh, there are two things I, I would like to mention here. First of all, we mentioned that our CV flow, ASOC, will have shipped more than 300,000 units to automotive market. And majority, if you look at the, the, the market, one is a, really the fleet market, the uh, fleet management market. The other one is the OEMs. And uh, if you look at application, majority of that 300,000 chips is going to the ADAS market. But however, I do see that in China and in Europe, we see many uh, uh, DMS and the in cabin monitoring solution uh, or design wins uh, are popping up, and uh, and we do we have won several of them, and also we mentioned that uh, some of them will be in production in China this year, and uh, that's why you you see we're talking about at this point. So I I think what I'm trying to say is DMS in cabin monitoring ADAS will continue to be our short-term revenue uh, opportunity for our automotive market while we continue to prepare solution for level two plus and above. Okay, that's helpful, thank you. And then separately on the emotional win, um, how does that relate to the funnel? And I guess, you know, both is that in the funnel at all? And then, you know, as you guys talk about the funnel and the revenue profile of the wins that you're getting, how are you thinking about level four or five types of wins when it's so long until the revenue would actually start to kick in? Right, so it definitely is in the funnel, and uh, uh, you know we are talking to a customer, including promotional, about their guidance and also their expectation into production. So we de we definitely have a good idea. They're thinking on their uh, production date and in terms of volume, so it's in our funnel. But I, I, like you said, you know this is uh, it's a longer a longer term project uh, that we have been working on for more than four years on this particular project. And we expect that uh, although the revenue is not going to be immediately high uh, in this year, but we do see that uh, when it's ramp up, will give us uh, a reason, a very, very good returns in terms of, in terms of our, uh, investment. But at the same time, uh, you know, when we talk about uh, our uh, uh, revenue funnel last year, 
we include everything we have visibility, right? Which so you can imagine that motional was part of that funnel when we discussed last quarter. Great, thank you. Congratulations on the announcement. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Vivek Arya with Bank of America. Your line is now open. Question. So for me, I'm curious, what is the CV attach rate per car? I, I think you mentioned about 300,000 shipments uh, cumulative. I'm curious how many cars does that correspond to? And were these shipments replacing what you were selling to the same customer before? Or are these new applications or, or new customers? Uh, I was uh, just hoping for some more color on that. Right. So like I said, for the ADAS or in cabin or DMS type application, is one car or one, one, one chip per car. So the 300,000 chip means 300,000 cars. Um, in terms of uh, uh, whether this is replacement, uh, I think it's not because in the past when we sell video processor, is really for the DVR. And uh, th uh, for the 300,000 automotive CV chip, we sell, we sold that into the ADAS market as well as DMS market. And I think that's a brand new market for us, so it's not a replacement, replacement for our video processor chip. Got it. Um, the next question, um, I think you gave uh, the contribution from DAWA. I, I forgot whether you gave it for both DAWA and Hikvision for uh, Q4. Uh, if you could just repeat what the contribution was in Q4, uh, what you're expecting for Q1, and, and in general, how should we think about them uh, in terms of contribution for uh, this fiscal year? Right, so we talk about Dahua and the high vision combined is like a, uh, low middle teams, low, low teams uh, total revenues uh, for us this year, uh, sorry, in Q4. And moving forward, I think Dahua will continue to be a, a strong customer for us because we talk about they not only clean up their inventory, but also that their CV revenue uh, is ramping up. High vision, on the other hand, I think it's going to be a a smaller uh, customer moving forward because while they continue to digest the video processors, they, we haven't get design win from high vision on the CV side. Uh, moving forward, I, I, I continue to see that the China, uh, you know, security cam camera market is important for us, and Dawa will be a leading our customer in there. Thanks very much. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Ross Seymour. With Deutsche Bank, your line is now open. Hi, guys. Congrats on the strong results and guidance. Thanks for letting me ask a question. I wanted to dive into the automotive side. For me, uh, you've had a couple really good quarters in a row. I just wanted to blend what you're doing this year, where you said it's going to be the, the fastest growing area, with the first, second, and third wave sides of things. So how would you describe what's driving the growth now and the transition uh, that's still driving strong growth in fiscal year 22 before you get to the true wave three, which would be next year? So how do you see your business transition over that period of time and yet still deliver this strong growth? Right. So I, I think there, the strong growth coming from the multiple area. First of all, the first wave of CV helps tremendously. You can see that our CV revenue growth Last year we said $25 million. This year is, we said it's going to be more than 25% of total revenue. And if you think that uh, you know, today uh, the analysts putting our uh, whole year revenue around $280 million, so 25% 25, 25 of that was roughly 70 million. So we just CV alone grow from 25 to 70. And the, the growth mainly is in the professional security camera and also ramping up our second, rate, second wave of our uh, of CV revenue, which is a uh, consumer applicant. Uh, during the meantime, we continue to uh, uh, ramp up our uh, more CV uh, design wins on consumer applicant as well as different uh, vertical markets. We talk about access control. We talk about uh, you know um, uh, people counting markets. So there. Different markets that we're going after with our traditional uh, security camera design. And so that continues to give us a growth. At the same time, we talk about our automotive, automotive market continue to have a stronger uh, growth. I think that combination of current uh, uh, video only solution, for example, the DVR market continue to grow fast in uh, Japan, Korea, and China. 
and also we just report that we have design wing at the Ford and the Volkswagen. So uh, you can see that even in US and Europe start adopting the DVR solutions, which is really our, uh, we, we, I believe that we are the market leaders in that particular market. And uh, uh, so that continued to give us automotive growth. At the same time, we just report that we have, we have accumulatively shipped more than 300,000 CV chip into automotive. That also is an indication that we're doing well and that we are on track to deliver our wave three in Canada year 22 and 23. Thanks for providing that bridge. I guess one for Casey. Uh, I, I know you said seasonality doesn't come in on the revenue side so much, and there's lots of puts and takes there. But if we shifted down to kind of your, your general feeling on OPEX for the year, how, how are you thinking about that? Are there any big puts and takes to think about? How do we think about it relative to revenue growth, et cetera? Yeah, so um, I'd say, um, you know, SG&A is all fairly consistent with the exception that, uh, as we've talked about in the past, we are investing in the, uh, in the sales and marketing area in Europe, uh, obviously uh, building out our capabilities there, and so that has been some additional expense or will be some additional expense for the year. Really, uh, our continued driver is going to be on the engineering side. Uh, like I talked about with, uh, with the 5 nanometer uh, and, and the other costs related to, to doing these advanced technologies, there aren't many people bringing chips out at a pace that we are, uh, that Chan and his team are doing successfully uh, last year and continuing into this year, and, and that doesn't come without cost, and that cost is we have to continue to build our engineering team, not only in the U.S., but in, in Europe uh, and in, uh, in, in, in Asia, as well as uh, we need to continue to invest in, in making sure that we can tape out uh, leading edge chip, chips to, to take advantage of the success that we're having right now. So those are really going to be the drivers. And, and the engineering side, that's pretty consistent except for it's just getting more and more expensive. On the, on the uh, uh, sales and marketing side, that's a little bit new. Uh, it's not a huge investment, but we are making sure that we have the opportunity to take advantage of all markets globally. Perfect. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Quinn Bolton with Needham & Company. Your line is now open. Hey, Fermi, congratulations on the nice results. I wanted to ask sort of a longer-term question in the security surveillance market. You know, lots of uh, puts and takes there. You're gaining share at Dawa and some of the Tier 2s. Um, you seem perhaps a little less optimistic about winning CV at High Vision. I guess... You know, and then and then high silicon is is obviously um, can't can't uh, secure you know new new semiconductor supply. So I guess when you put all of that together and you look at it over the next couple of years, do you, do you think your position to to gain share in security? Do you hold it flat? Um, just just to kind of what are your thoughts over the next couple of years about uh, whether you can you can grow your share of that uh, security camera market? Right. Um, I think that uh, in the next few years, the biggest transition for the security camera market is going to be transition from a video solution to the CV solution. And uh, we believe that uh, um, we are in a very good position from a technology point of view uh, uh, to, to provide the best solution to the, to the market, uh, both China and non-China customers. Outside China, I, I'm confident that we'll be a, a, a number one provider by far. And in China, because of dual supply chain, uh, we see we, we continue to see a competitor coming on on the low end side to compete on the CV uh, solution. But on the middle and high end side, we probably we are probably the best solution is even inside of China at this point. So I'm uh, hopeful that uh, we will continue to gain market shares in a, a security camera market when the transition uh, uh, continues. And uh, it's hard for me to predict how fast the CV revenue is going to ramp up. But, you know, just look at, uh, you know, we talk about 2 million units of CV chip shipment uh, at the end of Q1. And the uh, majority of that in a professional security camera. Um, and, uh, and I expect that the growth rate will continue to increase in a big, uh, big percentage. So I, I, I'm hopeful that uh, we're going to see a similar transition, just like 10 years ago when the security camera transitioned from analog to digital, we're going to see a very similar uh, transition 
from a, a video to a, a AI in the next couple of years. Thanks for me. And then one for, for Casey, just, you know, as, as things get tight, uh, investors always worry about double ordering. I'm wondering if you could give us any any thoughts and or, you know, if you're seeing any um, change in customer order behavior, whether, you know, as lead times are stretching out, are these customers more comfortable placing orders with longer lead times um, with cancellation penalty, meaning that, you know, these are pretty sticky uh, orders, just, just any comments you can make about, you know, your confidence in the orders that are coming in would be uh, greatly appreciated. Sure. Well, as you've heard me say in the past, in, in environments like this, CFOs sleep like a baby, go to sleep and wake up every two hours crying. Um, it's just really dynamic. And, and we go out, we have to dial up our activity with our customers. We have to continue those discussions. We have to be talking to our suppliers. And, and, and we have to try to, to map that together as best we can. As you've heard from everybody this quarter, that has come into play in the last, uh, in the last quarter. And I, I anticipate that we're going to continue to deal with that for the first half of the year. But to your question really is how much of that is, is going to carry out into the second half of the year to where people aren't ordering for capacity in the first half, but just making sure that they have enough to make it through, uh, through the end of the year. And we're going to get better visibility like everybody over the next uh, over the next quarter but right now certainly we're all dealing with those issues uh, our partners have been very good uh, and, and have been very supportive but it's also a very difficult environment as, as, as you've heard and so we're going to continue to make sure that we're communicating with our customers trying to make sure they understand lead times to, and, and how we can best support them in, in what's going to be probably a challenging quarter or two and then to your point on the back end you see how much of that was capacity and how much of that was was inventory. Great. Uh, Quinn, this is Fermi. I just want to add one more uh, answer on that. Um, personally, you know, we all gone through this kind of environment in the past. I, I have no doubt that uh, um, our customer tried to build up inventory to protect themselves, which everybody should do in, under this environment. So it's our job to talk to our customer regularly to understand their true demands and trying to uh, work together to prevent uh, uh, a different kind of problem down the road. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of David O'Connor with Exane BMP Paribas. Your line is now open. Great. Thanks for letting me ask a question. Maybe one or two follow-ups from my side. Uh, firstly, uh, for me, on the, uh, you talked about winds at that way, um, less so at Hike Vision. You say that's taking longer um, or not as confident about that. Is, is there any particular reason why um, uh, winds at Hike Vision is taking longer? Um, that's my first question. And then maybe a question on the, um, for Casey on the supply chain. You mentioned it's tight. What's the, um, have you secured enough capacity to continue to grow uh, quarterly through uh, calendar 21? Thank you. Right. Let me answer the question about high vision first. I, I, I think that this due supply chain situation is definitely a concern for high vision. And I can, by when, when I talk to them, I, I can sense that it's very sensitive to them that uh, um, they want to secure a non-U.S. component as a higher priority. I think that's probably the biggest problem we're dealing with at this point. Casey, you want to talk, answer the second half? Sure. Um, obviously, in an environment like this, you're, you're always trying to secure uh, an appropriate amount of capacity, but but it's also very fluid. And so, you know, where where we're trying to, you know. Uh, you know, make sure we have the capacity that we need not only uh, for the first half but the second half of the year. Uh, things change and, and, and environments change. For example, what happened in Texas uh, in, in the last uh, few weeks is, is certainly something that's a dynamic that, that no one expected and, and it impacts across the, the semiconductor environment. And so I think that we're doing the right things to secure the capacity we need uh, for our customers. But uh, it, is, it is fluid and things like that can't happen. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Tristan Guerra with Baird. Your line is now open. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, just following up a little bit on the, the supply shortage, um, are you 
constrained in your current quarter guidance, which sounds like it's supply-based relative to the demand and what you otherwise would be able to ship if there was no constraint? And is there a way to quantify this and maybe also for the full year, you know, the since um, I'm assuming you probably have with a contract for uh, the rest of the year, you know, how much you think you, you have secured in supply growth versus, you know, what the demand is? Right. So in Q1, I don't think we are supply constrained. Um, and uh, um, because, first of all, um, I, I, I think, you know, we, we, we buy wafer from Samsung, and I think uh, they are very good partner and continue supply to us. And also, uh, in fact, the biggest shortage out there is uh, packaging and the sub substrate. Uh, we, our partner there is ASC in Taiwan, and also we have strong relationships. So in Q1, our guidance is not constrained by the supply. However, the, there's a curveball just being thrown at us is that uh, you, all, of you, all of you have probably heard that the Samsung Texas foundry uh, it was shut down because of the extreme weather. Um, we just get it. We, I, I believe that the, the, the factory has gone back to oper operational, and uh, they got the water and electricity, and we are working closely with Samsung to size up the impact to the delivery. And uh, if there's any, that will be probably a, in a Q2 time frame, uh, but we haven't uh, really got visibility on that yet. Uh, we will continue to work with our customer and also suppliers to make sure that we uh, don't uh, uh, we don't become the, the bottleneck for uh, for our customers. Okay, that's uh, that's great, color. And and given the environment of the PCB substrate price increases, are you able to pass on some uh, you know ASP increases to your customers as well, or? Could that also be a factor we should be looking at in terms of your gross margin outlook for this year? Well, I think um, we, we, you know, our uh, costs on the substrate definitely increase, but we have not passed it on to our customer yet. I don't think that's, well, it's not a high priority tax for us yet. Um, uh, also, all the guidance we give you on the Q, in Q1 include all of the costs we just mentioned. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Suji De Silva with Roth Capital. Your line is now open. Hi, Fermi. Hi, Casey Lewis. Um, so on the, I appreciate the, the computer vision revenue um, amounts and, and the guidance, uh, but can you help us in the mix there of Wave 2 consumer versus Wave 1 professional? Would the ratio there when it um, when it ramps up be similar to the video, which was one-third consumer, two-third professional, if I recall, just to get a sense of the relative size of those two? Yeah, as we fully ramp up, I think the ratio will be continue to be uh, similar in that range. Um, and also, uh, today, you know, just because wave one just uh, complete and uh, wave two just started, I think the revenue split still heavily favor professional security at this point. Okay, great. And my other questions, um, you gave um, pipeline data in the past few quarters. Do you have any update to those numbers at this point, or are you going to do that intermittently? No, uh, for the revenue funnel, we talk about that. We're probably going to give you annual update. Okay. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our last question comes from the line of Richard Shannon with Craig Hallam. Your line is now open. Well, thanks, guys, for taking my questions. Um, I'll follow up on the uh, professional security. Um, uh, Fermi, you mentioned kind of your early guidance, thinking about 280 top line of the quarter, that about 75 being from CV and most of it being professional security. That suggests that it's going to be a good portion of professional security for the year, like maybe a quarter or a third, roughly speaking. Uh, do you have visibility on whether CV becomes more than half of professional security this year or soon thereafter? And then just kind of following on that as we think longer out, do you think the, the cycle of, of video to CV, is that a similar time frame as you have seen from analog to digital in the past? Right. So um, we haven't given guidance about the CV uh, uh, percentage of total of a professional security camera. We'll consider that. But, you know, you, if you do the math, I think we're getting a higher percentage, and uh, uh, it's definitely become very meaningful for a professional security camera with our CV revenue today. Um, and... Uh, uh, that definitely is growth because our video processor, like I said last year, 
Our video process business has go down only by 10%, but our CV revenue growth this year is going to be a lot more than that. Um, so I, I, I do believe that uh, we will continue to maintain um, uh, video processor uh, revenue and while we're growing our uh, CV revenue. Uh, in terms of, uh, um, sorry, for, I forgot your second part of the question. Uh, the, the the trend from video to CV, do you see that happening in a yeah. similar uh, kind of cadence as analog to digital we've seen in the past? I, I agree. I think that's the case. In fact, I just mentioned that I think the transition from the uh, video to a uh, uh, CV, as particularly in a professional security camera, we're really seeing it. I think that transition will be uh, fast in a, will be continue to accelerate it in the next couple of years. And uh, um, I, I, in fact, one, one, one indication is majority of the new project that our customer kick off with us, they are all uh, CV based. So I have no doubt that uh, you're going to continue to see this trend in the next couple of years. Maybe, you know, when, when we transition from video, from, sorry, from the analog camera to video camera, uh, there's a three years of ramping up like very fast. We, I'm not sure we are in that phase yet, but I won't be surprised we'll see it start seeing that phase very, very quickly. Okay. Uh, thank you for that detail. I'll, I'll uh, pass along. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. There are no further questions. I will now turn the call back to Dr. Femi Wong for closing remarks. Yeah. I would like to thank all of you for joining us today, and I'm looking forward to see you next time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's conference call. Thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect.